Have you ever found yourself wondering if there was one piece of information that you could unlock about yourself that it would like set you free? Well, in my opinion, there is one such tool and that's known as the Myers-Briggs personality test. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be talking about exactly why I think the knowledge that I am an INFP and the knowledge that you could potentially gain by going to 16personalities.com is vital to understanding who you are in this world and how that can help you be a better person. So an INFP is also known as the healer. Growing up, my dad always used to say that a lot of my opinions would change over time just because as a young person, you're generally more quote unquote idealistic. And whenever he would say that, I kind of became frustrated. What's wrong with having certain ideologies? Now, why is that little anecdote interesting? It's interesting because INFPs are that way. They really stick to their core values as much as possible, and they always have a larger vision uh, for themselves and for the rest of society. And for this reason, that's why INFPs are better suited for certain jobs, such as being a, a mediator or a counselor, you know, social work, uh, or even being an artist, a writer, something where they can communicate themselves and their values. As I started to dig more into what makes an INFP tick, I realized that all those things that make them tick are very much in me. Now, it's not like a universal checklist that applies to me, but a lot of the tendencies in, of an INFP I find myself aligning with. We're gentle, encouraging communicators. I always found that whenever there was a conflict, I tried to mediate between both sides. This started pretty early on since my parents are divorced, and I kind of had to decide, you know, which parent I was going to side with in any given moment. Uh, my parents didn't make me do that but that's how I kind of felt. That has even carried on into how I do business. A lot of times when I'm speaking with a client or with Daniela or someone else we might be working with, uh, I like to ask the question, so what would that look like? Uh, because it really gives me a better vision of what their vision is. That's the biggest thing I think for me personally as an INFP is that I'm always trying to understand uh, people and things. I just want to understand my position in the world and I know that it's a complex world but if I can relate to it better, the, the best way to do that is through knowledge itself. So INFPs will adapt their communication style uh, depending on who they're talking to. And I noticed that I do this, especially since lately, I've been sending voice messages and videos to people. After I send the voice message, specifically on Instagram in the DMs, I'll play it back because I wanna make sure I didn't sound silly. So when I play it back, I hear the tone, and I'm really big on tone. I think tone is very important in general but the tone that I have with so-and-so is completely different than the tone that I have with another person. It almost sounds like I'm playing kind of a different character depending on the person I'm talking to. Although we strive to make sure harmony is there and, and we, we basically mediate uh, ideas and people in conversations, we tend to keep our views, at least our stronger views and our core values, we tend to hold those inside of us, especially when I'm in a new group of people. I find that I'm asking a lot more of the questions simply because we may be discussing a topic that I don't quite want to show my hand yet. I don't want to dive deeper and let them know exactly what I'm thinking. It's not that I'm afraid of, of their judgment, it's more just my, my deeply held beliefs are very important to me. So in order to peel back that layer, we have to be super comfortable with each other and I have to know that we've kind of touched on this thing before. If I'm being extra quiet around you or if I'm, it seems like I'm asking more questions than I am offering my opinion, uh, that's why. Reflection and personal time is really important to us INFPs. And the reason is we need time to process um, all the experiences we have and maybe some new information that we've obtained. I remember uh, during college, I would go to the gym around like 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., uh, work out for like an hour, hour and a half. And I remember the thoughts that I would have were like very intense and uh, almost like philosophical, just analyzing what I was going through and what I was experiencing during those days and then I would go for like a one or two hour walk completely on my own just to continue the thought exercises and the reflections that I had in my head. Maybe part of it was I was just trying to avoid making connections with people, but at the same time, I really think it placed me and it allowed me to be me and understand what my core values were so that when I finally did start socializing more, I understood who I was and that was really important and it's still important to this day. Apparently there's a statistic out there that we have the second lowest average income of all the types. As you can see, that in itself is kind of a hurdle. Another thing I was reading was like, we're not very good at being managers because we have a hard time telling people when they might be making a mistake or when they might not be living up to what they're supposed to do. Oh, Guess what? 
I had the freaking microphone off. And just as I was saying previously about the fact that uh, I used to take a lot of long walks and I like to isolate myself in college to understand what my core beliefs were. Generally speaking, we, we don't mind working in a team setting, but for the most part, we do like to hone in our ideas and our eventual actions on our own, mainly because we don't want to step on anybody's toes. And we also like to have that authenticity of doing our own work and taking pride in, in the work that we, we personally created. What I've noticed is if we do have to work with someone else, it's totally possible. I don't want to make it seem like we're belligerent, annoying people who just don't want to tell you the truth to your face because we're afraid of that. It's more just that if, as long as you're cooperative and you're open uh, to how we, for lack of a better term, do business, then things will go well. And uh, just know that you gotta be flexible and I'll be extra flexible. I may not say it to your face, but I'm thinking it. INFPs are sometimes to their own detriment consumed by trying to understand and rationalize complex issues. So I'll give you an example of this. During the 2016 presidential election, when I started to quote unquote wake up and realize who I was gonna vote for, there were a lot of days as I was reading the news, and I'm sure I'm not the only person who suffered through this regardless of personality type, and I, I hate to even use that word, suffer. But the truth is, I really got consumed by the news, and I found myself literally on Wikipedia connecting all these seemingly um, unrelated things to each other. Now, some would say that maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist. I don't think I'm a conspiracy theorist. I just really think I was trying to understand and place current events with past history and all that fun stuff. And I, I find that I continue to do that to this day. I'm more mature and I'm now in my mid twenties and I have more real world experience. A lot of this stuff makes sense to me uh, in terms of that's just how the world is. We're not of the world and uh, this is not our home. So all this crazy stuff that's going on as depressing as it might be and as much as I'm trying to rationalize it and understand it and make it tangible to my philosophy and my core values, it's just never gonna, there's never gonna be that internal peace as far as that goes because I'm not in control of that stuff. I've had to learn to tune that stuff out for sure. Only research the stuff that's really gonna help me and help my business and uh, help my future family because once you go down that rabbit hole of becoming obsessed as an INFP, you might find that you haven't showered in like five days, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it's never been that long. Yes, it has. Don't say that. Okay, it hasn't been five days, maybe like two and a half days. I've stated in this video a few times that I myself am a business owner, and I, it does align with the fact that INFPs tend to, to prefer working on their own. However, Daniela can attest to this. The, there is one scenario that I've gone on record as saying, I would work for somebody else. And that scenario would be if their vision was so great and so clear and so much bigger than mine that I really felt like I could help and enhance their vision through my gifts. We're not driven by money or status necessarily. We are really passionate about the vision and the values and we like to surround ourselves with people who have really strong uh, values. So that would be the only scenario that I would find myself working for somebody else. Otherwise, I really like my autonomy. Some INFPs that you may or may not know include Johnny Depp, J.R.R. Tolkien, Shakespeare, and then if we want some fictional characters in there to help solidify it, we're looking at Frodo Baggins from Lord of the Rings, and we're looking at Amelie uh, from the movie Amelie. So that's interesting, I like that movie. So anyway, if you really liked any of what I said here, or if you think I'm totally off my rocker, uh, please leave a comment below. If you're an INFP yourself, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to find out what your personality type is. If you go ahead and go to 16personalities.com, drop that in the comments below. I love finding out what people are. I don't wanna box you in uh, to a certain personality type, but I do believe that knowledge is power and it's only gonna help you in your interpersonal relationships and your communication with all kinds of people. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'm wishing you all the best.